Almost all the talk about Jake Gensel this summer would have to do, naturally, the ankle surgery that he just had and how much time he'll likely miss to start the coming NHL season. But there's another issue that'll pop up that's much more significant soon after. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates, the same place that you found this. Jake is as good as any winger in the league for counting on 35 to 40 goals for a given season. We agree on that? Okay. Jake's 28 years old. We have to agree on that. Jake is currently being paid $6 $6 million, again, for this coming season, on the final year of the five-year $30 million contract to which Jim Rutherford signed him back then. Wonderful, wonderful deal from the team standpoint. One of the best bargains in the league. No offense, Jake. But the Penguins really, really got you on that one. Not that he's, you know, scrounging around for pennies on the floor. But he's been underpaid through the prime of his career. Jake is going to be an unrestricted free agent next summer. Unless the Penguins get him signed before that to another extension. And this is where... Things get all kinds of layered and complicated because it's just not as simple as saying, oh, Jake, yeah, he's a total steal. You have to keep him. Absolutely keep him. Well, there are other considerations. There are pros, and believe it or not, there are a couple of cons. The pros are the obvious ones, what I've mentioned already. He's been the Penguins' leading goal scorer for some time now. This is not a new development. He surpassed both Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin in that regard throughout this decade. And that's not a small thing. When you condense hockey down to its most basic basics, it's still about scoring goals. It's still about getting more goals than the other guys do. Another positive, and something that's going to be considered, in addition to really needing to be considered, is that he's Sid's left winger. And if your commitment as a management group, as an ownership group, is to do right by Sid and to give Sid every chance to go for another cup, as was just demonstrated again through the acquisition of Eric Carlson, You're not letting Sid's winger go. And on top of all that, although I'm not as big a believer in the whole hometown discount concept that some are, this is the only organization that Jake's known. For the most part, this is the only center that Jake's known. I mean, he's had periods of time where he's been with others, you know, notably with Gino, and actually did really well with Gino, I should add. But... There's reasons for Jake to say, okay, if I were to go on the open market and teams were to offer eight, nine million a year for me, I could stay in Pittsburgh and get it done for seven or something. It's not unthinkable, even though Jake and everyone associated with Jake would already be keenly aware that he's been playing at a at something of a discount already over the course of his NHL career here. But then there's the other side. If you think about all of the long-term contracts the Penguins have wrapped up in players who are 30 or older, and then squeeze that down to just the guys who are 35 or older, Almost all of the top six in this equation, top six forwards, fall into that category, meaning 30 or older. 
and most of the best ones fall into the 35 or older. Now, you and I can go back and forth as to whether or not Gary Bettman's ever going to allow the salary cap to go up from 82, 83 million. But it's not going to go up that much and it's not going to go up that fast, even when it does. So that's an awful lot of money tied up. Even if the players are good, even if the players continue to be productive, like just throw a name into this as a, for instance, Ricard Raquel, who's 30, but still plays a really young style with a lot of uh, energy, a lot of passion to his game, a lot of motion. You don't look at Raquel out there and think, man, he's slowing down. But Raquel is one of those guys. He signed here for five years. He signed at five plus. Brian Rust is in there as well. A little bit of a down year for him. This past one, but still a really important player for this franchise now and into the future. Those are all commitments across the board. What ends up happening if you're Dubas is you kind of reach the point between those commitments and the various no movement, no trade, limited this, limited that, that exist on this roster where you can't really build much other than to just keep the same people and try to get creative by moving this or moving that or whatever, all that crazy creativity was that went into the Carlson trade, and just kind of hold on for two, three years. If you add Jake to that, even though Jake would be the youngest of that group by a little bit, even though Jake would almost certainly continue to be a highly productive player for you, you still got to think about the overall package you still got to think about all those 30 plus players who are making all this money for so many years to come when we come back j1q today's j1q comes from chris who says dk knowing how mario lemieux operated the team And to your point on the Monday episode of taking care of those who meant something to the team, does removing Bob Airy from the broadcast team drive a wedge further between Lemieux and the Fenway Sports Group? Uh, I, I don't know that it does, Chris. Mario and Bob Airy have known each other and have been friends going all the way back to, my goodness, Mario's rookie year, 1984-85. Airy was, of course, the first-round draft pick the previous year, and he ended up becoming Mario's winger for a, a decent stretch of 66's time. Notably, whenever Mario was with Robbie Brown, this was late 80s, and neither of the two of them were going to come back and take care of their own zone. So they had Bobby do all that. And in the meantime, Bobby put forth a whole ton of goals because uh, as one person, it was Terry Raskowski, actually. Now I remember who it was. Uh, another of Mario's winger beneficiaries very early in the big guy's career who said that you could put a fire hydrant out there on a line with Mario, and he'd still score 40. They're friends. There's no way Mario would have allowed this if he was still the owner. Mario is intensely loyal to people just as he expects them to be intensely loyal to him. He believes in that. He's been that way forever. And even on those occasions where he's had to make moves back when he was majority owner along with Ron Burkle, uh, that wouldn't necessarily have fallen in line with that. He's gone out of his way to make sure that that person is still taken care of. 
in some capacity. I'm not going to give you any details on that, but there are several examples of this. And that's not happening with Aerie. But when you talk about driving a wedge, the the easiest way to tick off Mario and to get on his bad side, in addition to showing disloyalty, is to do something that impacts his money. I'm not saying this in any sort of, like, you know, disrespectful way or whatever. I'd be the same way. I'd absolutely be the same way. Mario's entitled to all the money that he's earned and then some. And then on top of that, he and Natalie and everyone else who works with the Mario Lemieux Foundation on all of their eminently worthwhile endeavors deserves everything that they have coming to them. And as I've shared with you here before, the Fenway Sports Group didn't really react the way Mario and Ron wanted them to in one specific setting where Mario and Ron thought that they did the FSG people a solid in taking care of an annoying minority owner who everybody wanted out of the process. Mario and Ron got that done, and FSG was supposed to find a way to compensate them and didn't. And that's an existing sticking point that only the FSG people can patch up. If and when they do, you'll see, I believe, Mario back at the rink again. Not the way he was as owner and everything, but you'll see him more than once a year, which is what he was seen this past season. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. I'm going to do another one of these tomorrow. 